Hello again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on this 11th day of May 2020. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. First graphic, I'll start off with the uh, breakup map here for May 11th. Uh, got uh, flood advisories continue there for Good Pasture River uh, for another day or so. Otherwise, Yukon River continuing to uh, now mostly open actually from Fort Yukon all the way down into the lower and through the lower river valley there but across the delta still mostly ice Kuskokwim River almost nearly mostly open and not any problems going on there and of course rivers southern Alaska mostly open now North Slope River is still iced up as well as the No Attack and uh, Koyukuk River or I'm sorry the Kobuk River Koyukuk Koyukuk River has got uh, some open areas, some and mostly open right on down to the Yukon. So from there, taking a look at the hazardous weather graphic, there's a flood advisory out, as you can see that yellow area just north, northeast of, of Bettles there. That's along, uh, that's for the Dietrich Highway north of Wiseman at mile post 206 on the Dalton Highway. High water levels reported there. So flood advisory for that area. Flood advisory continues there for the uh, river streams of the upper Tanaha Valley 40 mile country. And then the red shaded areas, that's for high fire danger uh, for this evening until 10 p.m. this evening for the Fairbanks area, especially for the uh, Eastern Alaska range, only expecting winds about 15 miles an hour or so throughout the greater Fairbanks area, but that combined with humidities 20% or lower results in uh, high, very high fire danger and even higher conditions over the Alaska range due to gustier winds of 15 to 30 miles an hour. And again, that's out until 10 p.m. this evening with humidities running as low as 15 percent. Then they'll climb up late this evening throughout tonight and fire danger will improve. And from there, going to satellite imagery, see a batch of clouds with the system rolling right on up across uh, southern Alaska with uh, fairly good rainfall amounts, 12-hour uh, period in the early afternoon, up to uh, half an inch falling there at uh, Pedro Bay, across southern Cook Inlet, quarter of an inch of rain fell at Homer and Seldovia, and a third of an inch fell at Portage and Seward. Uh, by contrast, seven hundredths of an inch at Kodiak, and really not too much of anything fell north of uh, for northern Cook Inlet, Anchorage, Kenai reporting nothing, just uh, gusty southerly winds or southeast winds, and about a hundredth of an inch over Cordova. So really kind of a narrow area of, uh, of wetting and soaking rains coming up across southern Cook Inlet there and uh, up into the areas of the Kenai Peninsula as well. Out west, uh, the next storm system moving into the western Aleutians bringing gale force winds, rain, fog to uh, Shimiana too, and that beginning and the rain extending eastward to Amchitka Island. Uh, area high pressure in advance of the system brought uh, partly sunny skies to Atka Island, clouds for Adak, but light winds, and some frontal remnants brought showers. You can see a couple of weak bands there, weakening bands that were once frontal boundaries across the eastern Aleutians, northwestward there from Moon Mac Island, another one along and just east of St. Paul and St. George from St. Matthew Island on down along the Alaska Peninsula. There were some showers and uh, clouds, rain with that. Northern Bering Sea saw some dense fog and uh, flurries and fog finally showed up along portions of the central eastern Arctic coast today. As you'll see there, uh, fog, central Arctic coast, and then actually flurries over on the east side toward Kaktovik and Barter Island, fog and flurries there. Natasuk had a hundredth of an inch of precipitation in the last 12 hours. That must have been just from some thick fog there. But uh, gusty winds through the passes of the Brooks Range today. <clears throat> Higher elevations in the northern interior. <clears throat> 
anywhere from 25 to 35 miles an hour across the north slope and up to uh, 25 miles an hour, say at Indian Mountain, and also uh, about 15 to 20 for the passes of the Alaska Range, really not much of a gradient there. It's mostly off to the north and mostly sunny, warm, temperatures well into the 70s once again this afternoon, at least by early afternoon, across the uh, Tanana Valley from the Alaska Range northward across the Upper Yukon Valley and extending westward. Looks like partly sunny skies there across portions of the Seward Peninsula. Dense fog, both reported earlier today at Savunga and Gamble. And showers from the Perbloffs down across the Alaska Peninsula. <coughs> Excuse me. Another mostly sunny day there for the southeast coast with temperatures uh, ranging from 72 at Haines, 73 at Huna, and Elfin Cove had 70 degrees even, usually a cooler area there. And you can see sunshine extending down across the Queen Charlotte's and then that storm system out to the west, which uh, tonight will advance to the east and bring some gusty winds and rain into the central Aleutians. And a isolated shower remains just a chance for Nikolsky there. And also the Alaska Peninsula, southeast flow aloft, and remnants of a frontal boundary keeps it unsettled and damp there with low clouds, fog, drizzle, maybe some light rain. Also for the Pervlovs, but to a lesser extent, high pressure there developing just east of Kodiak. Dries it out as the moisture pulls off to the northwest there, and that's associated with the uh, low over eastern Norton Sound. And it's looked for uh, considerable clouds with showers and areas of rain with that trough extending down into northern Bristol Bay or northwest Bristol Bay, more likely Togiak Bay. <clears throat> so a chance of showers for the Kuskokwim Valley. Also a chance of showers along and north of the Brooks Range there locally to that low center that's uh, near Northway, but to the north of that, diminishing winds, but still a little breezy as you head up toward the Brooks Range. Some flurries, maybe snow showers north slope, mainly eastern Arctic coast. Pan Antle stays fair with light winds. And for the Tuesday outlook, we've got uh, flurries along the uh, oh, central Arctic coast, otherwise partly mostly sunny up there with lighter winds over all of the interior, but winds increasing for the central eastern Arctic coast there with a uh, tighter gradient. And pretty breezy conditions for the eastern coastline as well. Showers with that slow moving low now just drifting westward instead of moving as rapidly as it is today up across southern Alaska. But that'll keep uh, conditions cloudy, damp, and unsettled for the southwest coast, even the Kuskokwim Valley. But look for mostly sunny skies tomorrow afternoon in south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, including Prince William Sound, the north Gulf Coast, and Panhandle. Rain, wind, and fog continue for the uh, Aleutians. Showers for the Alaska Peninsula. And about the same conditions again on Wednesday. That low, though, slips off to the south. So looking pretty good there, Adak and Atka, light northeast winds with partly sunny skies, showers with the Pribiloffs. Winds increase again through the Brooks Range and northern interior, higher elevations, and pretty windy for the western Arctic coast, less wind on the east side. Mostly sunny, a thermal low develops, so temperatures uh, 60s to mid-70s. Southern Alaska, Copper River Basin, another warm sunny day up over the eastern interior. Pan Antle seeing increasing clouds, chance of showers down south with uh, Mostly cloudy conditions with a, a few afternoon breaks for the central panhandle, northern panhandle, mostly sunny. And for lows tonight, 15 to 23 for the North Slope and Arctic Coast, mid 20s for the Brooks Range. South of the mountains, we've got uh, 40s. Upper 30s, south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet to near 40 in the Susitna Valley. 40s for the panhandle, upper 30s, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, Aleutians, mid 30s for the Pribiloffs, near 30 for St. Lawrence Island. And highs tomorrow, 20s for the Arctic coast and north slope warming into the lower to mid 40s for the Burks Range. And again, south of the mountains, 50s, mid to upper, lower 60s, Tanana Valley. South of the Alaska Range, we got lower 70s in the Copper River Basin as well as the Susitna Valley. 50s to mid 60s, Anchorage area, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, a little cooler down south toward Homer. Otherwise, Seward may pop up to 66, 54 for Kodiak. And then followed by lows Wednesday morning, mid-teens, North Slope Arctic Coast, 20s in the Brooks Range, 30s south of the Brooks Range, 30s to near 40 for Central Alaska, upper 30s, lower 40s, Southern Alaska with same thing for. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
First line weather graphic, Tuesday morning. IFR, areas of the North Slope Arctic Coast. VFR from the Brooks Range southward. Start out with a uh, little marginal VFR early on from the Turnagain Arm area, maybe the Kenai Peninsula up across Talkeetnas to the Alaska Range. And then across Southern Cook Inlet there into the Western Alaska Range areas of the Eastern Slopes. And then mostly VFR on out to the coastline. You get into some IFR there, Yukon Delta, out over the Norton Sound open waters, or yeah, and St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait. IFR, Western Aleutian spreading eastward, approaching Atka, south side of the Alaska Peninsula, southwest Kodiak Island. Afternoon stays VFR over the southeast coast the entire day. Now VFR for the North Gulf Coast, all of interior Alaska, the exception being areas of marginal VFR, North Slope, Central Arctic Coast, IFR through the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, all the northern Bering Sea grazing the Yukon Delta Coast, but over the Pribilofs, Nunavak Island, and then IFR with the front out over the Aleutians, Southern Bering Sea, and also less IFR now, looks like uh, over the Trinity Island, Sitkanak, and along the coast, south coast of Alaska Peninsula. Wednesday morning, VFR, interior Alaska, Bristol Bay, most of Kodiak, all the Gulf of Alaska. Marshall VFR sneaking into the uh, Dixon entrance area, some of which will get up to southern uh, Prince of Wales Island, maybe Metlakatla, Annette, those areas, otherwise good VFR. Some IFR, western north slope possible, northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, along the coast, Nunavak Island to St. Paul, St. George. And then IFR with that uh, frontal boundary hung up over the central Aleutians. And some IFR again, southwest Kodiak Island and the south coast of the Alaska Peninsula. Afternoon Wednesday looking really nice. VFR from the Arctic Ocean southward to Bristol Bay, North Gulf Coast, all the Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak, and on out to the southwest coast. Still some IFR, northern Bering Sea, including uh, the Pribilofs. Marginal for St. Lawrence Island, Nunavak Island, marginal for the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. IFR now showing up along the south coast of the Panhandle with marginal VFR shade farther to the north, otherwise staying VFR. Some of that marginal VFR creeping across St. Lawrence Island in toward Annette and uh, Metlakatla, but uh, not too bad. And moving on, two passes, Anatuvik and Adigan, both VFR tomorrow on either approach, Lake Clark and Merrill. Uh, be some clouds to start, uh, possible marginal conditions, eastern entrance, but generally looking at a VFR day, especially from mid-morning on through the afternoon. Rainy VFR, windy, good VFR. Isabel, same forecast. Mentasta, Tanita, Portage, Chilkoot and White, all VFR. Freezing levels, upper level ridging, still keeping the freezing levels on the high side over the southeast coast, ridging into the north central interior with uh, generally 8,000 feet through that area all the way up uh, to the northwest coast and then cooling to the north uh, down to the surface air, central eastern Boulevard Sea Coast Brooks Range and also cooler air out over the Aleutians. And for uh, icing, the front got some uh, isolated moderate, maybe considerable along the front coming into the southwest bearing, pushing eastward across the Aleutians and also some scattered areas of icing over the interior of the uh, mixed variety, possibly isolated areas of considerable moderate, but mostly lighter than that, freezing level to 10,000 feet. Taking a look at the jet stream, ridging one center there near the northern panhandle, actually covering uh, the Yukon and ridging across the interior to another center there over the Chukchi Sea. And east southeast flow between that and the trough farther to the south at about 70 knots cutting across uh, the Barren Islands southwest interior areas. And then the stronger jet all the way south of the area, 150 knots, well south of the Aleutians with that system. And then northwest winds across Mackenzie River Delta. 9,000 feet easterlies up to 40 knots clipping the uh, central Arctic coast, 40 knotters out over the central Aleutians, otherwise uh, maybe 25 across the Seward Peninsula, 3,000 feet, showing pretty gusty winds there for the north slope and the Arctic coast, especially on the east side there, 40 to 50 knots, otherwise 40 to 45 knots down through the about the Brooks Range, southerlies 10 to 25 there on the east side of that low right over uh, close to Nome, high pressure in the Gulf, light wind southern Alaska, turbulence, occasional moderate chop over the Aleutians.
Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments and new and old and how the, we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, Tyros, back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures, uh, weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people, and it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important, and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect, but especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars and mm -hmm. weather balloons are so thinly spread, right. the satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. And, right. and an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, Satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're going to discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects, and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other huh. and they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? But look, Let's go more highbrow and talk okay. Michelangelo. Oh, so apparently okay. Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture yeah. and someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply uh, allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. When we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano. You know, just take it with your iPhone. Yeah. You can see a volcano going off. Yep. Right. But if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wait. So what's a wavelength? What that's, a wavelength? The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength wow. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So what's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. A <laughs> micron is a unit of length and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch. Yeah. A human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty too. short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other part okay. of the, uh, it's, it's just a, an expression for the, the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a, at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image. At 12 microns, we're seeing a heat signature here, really. And, and the way this color enhancement works is the, the yellow and the red stuff is, is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central. And if you were set, you were asked, where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you, <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say, show me the, what, you, what jumps out at you here, I'd say, well, n nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So a 12 micron doesn't help us. Okay. Let's look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right, look at that. It's practically the same image. So mm. where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns, can't really see it at 10.8. At mm -hmm. But when we take subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically, the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue. Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtracted one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, 
it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. We, mm -hmm. we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9, and then this image huh. becomes this image, and the fog bank jumps right out, and you can see it up there at Barrow. Now, every you got to choose the right tool for the job, sure. like they say. You open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this particular task? If you want to find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you want to okay. find fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, there's always caveats and gotchas, but this <laughs> fog procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that, you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways observ of the, observing the weather. Satellites are the great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, cool. thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, looking at today's sea ice analysis. Bristol Bay just about all ice free except for a little bit there along the peninsula there for eastern Togiak Bay or so, north coast, uh, nothing really too much. Kuskokwim Bay, still looking at a persistent area of heavier ice uh, just west of there and diminishing ice, northern Nunavak Island and still a fair amount of uh, heavier concentrations there southeast and east of St. Lawrence Island into western Norton Sound. Coastal water forecast for the Panhandle tomorrow on the south coast, northerly is 15 to 20 knots. North to northwest, 20 knots for the north coast, seas 6 feet. Inside waters, Lynn Canal, Stevens Passage, north at 10, seas 2 feet, northwest at 10 with 2 foot seas for Clarence Strait. Wednesday, southerlies 10 knots, central southern inside waters, south 15 for Lynn Canal. West, fifth, or west at 10 for the north coast, five foot seas, otherwise central coast south at 10 with six foot seas and along the coast of Prince of Wales Island, the marine areas 15 out of the south, seas five feet. And for Prince William Sound, southwest winds at 15 tomorrow, west 20 for the north Gulf Coast, west 20 also for the Barren Islands, Cook Inlet, light northerlies are variable to north at 10 or starting out north becoming variable in the afternoon and west at 10 for Kamishak Bay. And for Wednesday, variable to southwest, especially in the afternoon, southwest, 10, maybe 15 knots, northern Cook Inlet, variable to north for the south of, area th south of the Forelands. And for the North Gulf Coast and the Barren Islands, winds will be out of the west at 15 knots. Seas will run three to four feet and light winds for, nor or for uh, Prince William Sound with seas at two feet. Kodiak Island on the east side, southeast at 10, Shilakoff Strait, south 15. From Sitkanak to Castle Cape, southeast, 15 knots, four foot seas. Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, southeast at 10. Top side there, east 15. And for Bristol Bay, southeast winds at 10. Those swing around to the northwest on Wednesday at about 15 knots for Bristol Bay. And then on down the coastline there to Cape Sarachev, look for the winds being northeast at 15. And from Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, east winds 20 knots. Castle Cape to Sitkanak, southwest at 10. East at 10 for the east side of Kodiak Island. Shelikoff Strait, southwest 15, maybe 20 knots, but seas holding around three or two to four feet or so. On Alaska Island, 
Not too bad tomorrow, becoming southeast, picking up to 15 knots, 3 to 5 feet. Stronger winds, though, hitting in toward Nikolsky from Winmac Island, southeast increasing 30 to maybe 35 knots. Sees 8 to 10 feet, and that same wind pattern for Adak and Atka. Gale warnings in areas, especially north of the islands, southeast 30 to 35 knots. That extends out to Amchitka. West of there, northerly gales, 35 knots on the backside of that low, with seas of 14 feet. Small craft advisories, western Aleutians on Wednesday. Small crafts for northeast 25, Adak and Atka. Northeast or east northeast, 20 to 30 knots for the eastern Aleutians. Seas running 5 to 14 feet. St. Lawrence Island tomorrow, west at 20, north 10 for the Perbaloffs and the southwest coast, southeast at 10 knots with 2 to 3 foot seas. Norton Sound, 20 out of the south, 3 foot seas. Wednesday, north 15 for Norton Sound, north 15 to 20 for the southwest coast and the Bering Sea, Perbaloff, St. Matthew Island, northeast 15, seas 5 feet. And brisk wind advisories tomorrow for the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coastline, east 30 knots. We got gale warnings on the western Arctic coast down to uh, Cape Thompson, northeast 35 knots there, but much lighter south of Cape Thompson to Wales, east at 15. And for Wednesday, east winds on the brisk side for brisk wind advisories, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, 30 knots, uh, 25 knots out of the northeast, good for brisk wind advisories for the central coast, and brisk wind advisories for 25 knot winds out of the east for the west side, but diminishing as you head south, just 10 out of the north from Wales to Cape Thompson. And for tonight, look for some fog and flurries to continue and breezy conditions for the eastern Arctic coast, north slope as well. Could be a few snow showers. South of the mountains, though, dry and breezy for the higher elevations, but winds diminishing. Shower chances along that trough, uh, either side of the Alaska range there, but definitely that moisture pulling northwestward brings rain and showers and cloudy skies from Norton Sound and Lotto Hills down into Togiak Bay. Some rain and fog for the Alaska Peninsula. Next storm spreading wind and rain into the central Aleutians. And then the whole thing shifts to the south as skies clear out over southern Alaska and the Panhandle. And then for Wednesday, looking good over the eastern interior. Temperatures in the 60s to mid-70s once again. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.